<laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm a gentleman. I could see you moving. No, no, no. Movement. I am a gentleman. <laughs> you know, you know, Mr. Speaker, in linguistics, there is something they call and they teach this at the university, English for specific purpose. That not every word means the same thing in different fields. I can give you an example, Mr. Speaker. If you take a phrasal, phrasal verb like to know someone, in basic English, it means that I know you as Ken Lusaka. But in religious English, to know someone means something else. It means to procreate with them. <laughs> so you cannot, you cannot take the elimination of boundaries the same way they want to interpret it, that it is a work of IBC. That's not, that is not what this constitution intended. That is why they have provided it at, uh, in subsection 10 of, of 89 that you will only appeal after it is done. If you domicile it in a particular county, what is the work of IBC? Okay, there's a, a last one, Senator Sakaja, from Senator Harugura. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to raise on a point of order because uh, I'd like to know that Senator Sakaja is in order, insisting that uh, while it's very clear that uh, we are not disputing that either by popular or parliamentary initiative, the number of constituencies can be increased. But the issue is to locate them, because the constitution talks of even the population quota, that is the work of IBC. But if already you have a schedule which has already locate, allocated them, then what will be the work of IBC after that? Okay, Senator Sakaja. Thank you, Chair. You know, if, if um, members listened for the logical conclusion of an argument, even what Senator Cheriot is asking and Senator Arguri is asking will not be a question. So, Chair, our standing orders are clear, Speaker. When someone rises on a point of order, let them say what is out of order, because all we've had is points of argument. Despite all the poetry we've had about the limitation, no one has given us a contrary definition, because that is the definition that is there. Allocation of constituencies is one thing. The limitation is deciding exactly where in that area it is, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, when that process is being done, because in the same way, Senator Argura, that you're saying it must be done by population quota. In the last, in this constitution we have, the schedule spoke about 27 constituencies which fell below the population quota and say those 27 will not be touched. That was a schedule. The schedule is part, the schedule is part of the bill. The schedule is not an inferior part of the bill, Mr. Speaker. And that schedule became part of the constitution today. So in the same way, and uh, Senator Aaron is asking, that why is it that we can say, that Kenyans can say, we want 70 more constituencies and say where they are, if that is unconstitutional, then what you're saying as well is that Senator Ungeri's people, having passed the threshold required in the constitution, cannot do a popular initiative to ask for one more constituency in Kisi. Because they'll have asked for constituencies to be increased by a certain number and where they should be put. Mr. Speaker, on that one I disagree, even if I am alone, I disagree. We cannot accept the role of the people. The people themselves can bring an amendment here to do away with IBC. IBC is, cre is a creature of the constitution. In fact, the people can bring an amendment to do away with the Senate, Mr. Speaker. So what the people have proposed here to increase constituencies is within their right. And final say will be with the people of Kenya at the referendum. They will decide whether they agree with it or not. Tomorrow, McQueen can bring the same proposal. So, Mr. Speaker, that is my point. And the points of order are points of argument. We do not have to agree. We shall express it at the referendum. Mr. Speaker, as I go ahead, um, we, and, and we don't have to agree. Mr. Speaker, some of the imbalances. The, the, well, some. Okay. What is the Mr. point Speaker of order? Shwele. Senator Orengo. Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I want to say that I support this bill, and that's what I said. But it's always wrong to make factual misstatements. In fact, uh, in, in, in the courts here, if you go and argue today, that this is what the law says, and you appeared before the court the next day and argued the opposite direction, you will be put to order, uh, or you may be cited. Uh, you know, Mr. Speaker, there is a problem that we are having persistently when people think that if you have a bill to amend the Constitution through the popular initiative, then it is by the people. It is not by the people. It is by the promoters. And promoter can be one person. All he needs is to get one million people. If it was the people, we need the, we need the whole of Kenyans to sign. Uh, th this, is, this is a bill brought by the promoters. It is not by the one million people. 
The one million people was a condition precedent before you can take the bill to IEBC. So I think you should think of the process. The process is what is popular initiative. It's not that it is by the people. It is a popular initiative because you go through a certain thresholds. Yeah, so I think we've got to be very careful about what you're saying. Chair, yeah. there's a difference between a popular initiative and a parliamentary initiative in terms of who originated the thresholds. A parliamentary initiative does not need a threshold of a million signatures before it comes to this house. It does not need 24 counties. The reason why there's a higher threshold, and that's why I've given the precedent, I've, I've, I've quoted the case law in, uh, in India, I've quoted that it, it is the people who ultimately make the decision in, at the referendum. So if the people agree, if the people agree that those five be added to Siaya, or that two be added in Nandi, or that 12 be added in Nairobi, it is so. It cannot